Hello YouTube and welcome back to another review on a couple of Colt Single Action Army clones that were made in Italy and imported through Cimarron. In my previous video I did a review on a couple of revolvers that had the short barrels, the four and three quarter inch barrels, and was asked uh, if they came in longer barrel lengths, and of course they do. And so here are a couple of long barrel, seven and a half inch versions uh, that I chose to review on. So both of these are made by Uberti and imported through Cimarron. And I purchased these personally from Bud's Gun Shop because I like their pricing. And they ship pretty fast too, but there are other distributors and retailers that carry Cimarron imports of Pieta and Uberti. Up top here, we have the Colt Model 1872 Open Top. And on the bottom here, we have the Colt 1873 Single Action Army. Before we dig into the pistols, or revolvers rather, let's check out what's in the box. Okay, so starting with the 1872 open top, let's take a look at what's in the box. This is the standard uh, Cimarron box. Got their logo on the front. Website information on the bottom. see what we have here okay instruction manual NRA swag Bud's gun stop swag firearm safety depends on you just a basic pamphlet on firearm safety that's a shipping receipt bumper sticker pretty cool Texas Jack Swag. So this is the retail side of Cimarron. They not only sell firearms, but they carry a lot of uh, Old West stuff, holsters and outfits, hats and things like that. Uh, warranty card, you'll want to fill that out. And the owner notice. The revolver comes uh, wrapped in this plastic and is pretty heavily oiled when you get it. This comes with a, let's see, uh, a takedown tool. So that's what's in the box for the 1872 open top. And this is the revolver. The 1872 open top uh, is a metallic cartridge rear loading, originally in 44 caliber, introduced in 1872 by uh, Colt. This handgun developed following two patents, the first one in 1871 and the second one in 1872. It is estimated that the production span lies primarily between uh, February of 72 and June of 73. Um, there is still some confusion when naming it. It is uh, sometimes called the Colt Model 1871 or the Colt Model 1872. But uh, at this time, the most common accepted, accepted names are the Colt Model 1872 Open Top or just the Colt Open Top. Uh, it's, I believe it's estimated at about 2,000 total production, somewhere around there, of this revolver. So original Open Tops, 1872 Open Tops, are pretty darn rare, which is why I chose to get a reproduction in so, but basically when Roland White's request for extension for his breech loading revolvers patent was rejected by the American government in 1870, Colt started working on its own metallic cartridge uh, rear loaders. Up until then, it had been only practicing the so-called Richards Mason conversions. The Colt company continued converting muzzle loading percussion revolvers into rear loaders until 1878. But in 1871, Colt had patented at least two rear-loading revolvers using metallic cartridges, the Colt House Revolver and this, the Open Top. The House Revolver went into production the same year in 1871, 
but the open top didn't start production until 1872. The trigger and the revolving mechanisms were based on the same design as the previous Colt revolvers. Mason did bring some new innovations to this gun. Apart from the breech loading cylinder, he designed a unique frame, cylinder and barrel for the first time were not interchangeable uh, with the older percussion pistols. He also moved the rear sight right here to the rear of the barrel as opposed to the hammer as in the uh, older 1860 percussion. Chambered in 44 caliber, the gun was submitted to the U.S. Army for testing in 1872. The Army rejected the pistol and asked for a more powerful caliber with a stronger frame. Um, and 44 caliber was about the, the, the most powerful cartridge that you could fire in an open top. Anything hotter than that, and you're, you're, you could blow this thing apart. So in order to make a more powerful cartridge, he really didn't have a choice but to connect the barrel, the top of the barrel here with the back of the frame creating a square of reinforcement steel around the firing mechanism. Similar to the Remington revolvers, um, he placed the uh, rear sight on the rear of the frame and he consulted with Richards on some other improvements. The first prototype of the new gun was still chambered in 44 rimfire, but this new gun was chambered for the newest known caliber was the 45 Colt, and that's giving birth to the 1873. But for right now, let's just keep talking about the 1872 open top. So, um, the fit and finish of this reproduction is is great. I've always been pleased with Uberity when it comes to uh, the grips, the way they fit into the back strap. And, and the frame right here is smooth. The color case hardening is really nice. Good detail on the cylinder. This being based on a 1860 Navy model. It's got the ships and the oceanic design here on the cylinder. Later model later models were available in the the Army version, which had the larger Army grips. The takedown tool is to help you take the screw out right here. You remove this pin, and then you can. Uh, begin to disassemble the revolver. It disassembles very similarly to the uh, 1860 percussions. On the side here is the ejection rod for ejection, ejecting spent cartridges. The loading gate is fairly tight and stiff and is resisted by this flat steel spring right here. True to the original design, this flat steel spring is prone to breakage. You might want to pick up a couple extra ones just to have around if you plan on using the revolver a lot. It's just the nature of the design. You take the paw of the ejector rod and swing it out, then you can eject the cartridge. When released, it returns back to its original position. Compared to the 1873, there is that additional step of having to swing this out before you can eject your spent cartridges. At first click, the cylinder begins to rotate.
it doesn't spin quite as freely as the 73. Just part of the design, the way that the um, cylinder makes contact with the uh, mechanism in the frame. This revolver does come standard with the Uberti hammer safety. Not crazy about it, but it's the only option for this particular revolver. The bluing is nice. It's deep and it's shiny. The crowning is flat. It has a contrasted colored front sight. Siding this firearm is kind of tricky with the rear sight being so forward of the back of the revolver. You don't have much to work with there, <laughs> but it still is a lot of fun to shoot. Just trying to show you all angles of this beauty. Okay, so here is the 1873 Single Action Army. Before we dig into this firearm, let's get into what comes in the box. Pretty much the same stuff as the open top firearm safety pamphlet, NRA swag, Texas Jacks. warranty card owner notice pretty basic stuff instruction manual and a bumper sticker the gun does come heavily oiled and wrapped in this plastic here and it does not have a takedown tool it has this additional screw which is not an extra screw uh, as was pointed out to me in my uh, previous video by a viewer but this is the more correct base pin screw base pin screw and uh, I'll leave that out because we'll go over that here in a minute but that's what comes in the box okay so moving on to the firearm here the Colt single action army also known as the pacemaker was designed for the US government service revolver trials of 1872 and was adopted as the standard military service revolver until 1892. It was also referred to as the new model army metallic cartridge revolving pistol. So it had a good run. 1892, good run. Not quite as impressive as the 1911, but it has definitely earned its place. The Colt Single Action Army has been offered in over 30 different calibers and various barrel lengths. Its overall appearance has remained consistent since 1873. Colt's canceled its production twice, but brought it back due to popular demand. The revolver was popular with ranchers, lawmen, and outlaws alike. But as of the early 21st century, models are mostly bought by collectors and reenactors. Its design has influenced the production of numerous other models from other companies. The Colt Peacemaker revolver is a famous piece of Americana 
the original length of the barrel issued to the U.S. Cavalry was seven and a half inches with an overall length of 13 inches as, as with, with this revolver. Bound by the roll and white patent and not wanting to pay a royalty fee to Smith & Wesson, Colt could not begin development of bored through revolver cylinders for metallic cartridges until April 4th, 1869. For this design, Colt turned to two of its best engineers, Williams Mason and Charles Brinkenhoff Richards, who had developed a number of revolvers and black powder conversions for the company, so they had a good working relationship already. By the end of 1874, serial number 16,000 was reached. 12,500 uh, Colt single action revolvers chambered for the 45 Colt cartridge had entered the service, and the remaining revolvers were sold in the civilian market. The very first production single action army uh, revolver serial number one thought to be lost for many years after its production was found in the barn in Nashua, New Hampshire in the early 1900s. Can you imagine finding serial number one in your barn? The gun was chambered in 45 Colt containing charges of up to 40 grains of fine grain black powder and a 255 grain blunt round nose bullet. Relative to period cartridges, and most later handgun rounds, it was quite powerful in its full loading. So when, when the 45 Long Colt hit the market, it, it was basically the, the magnum of its day. Moving on to some of the, the details of this revolver, just like with the other Uberties I have, the fit and finish is, is great. I have no complaints at all. Color case hardening is really nice looking. I don't believe it's actually real uh, color case hardening. I believe it's a chemical effect, but it is, it's really pretty. Bluing is nice deep blue. So in my previous um, video, I've gone over uh, some of the the Colt features as far as the the hammer and the um, ejection uh, rod here and differences between old model and new model because this is an a 1873 era production reproduction right um, this is an old model so it has the features of an uh, an old model revolver it has the, the base pin screw as opposed to the spring-loaded pin. So in order to take the base pin out here, you've got, you've got to take this screw out. This is the screw that it ships with. You see it's got the knurled edging. The more correct Colt screw is this one right here, which basically fits flush. So if you desire to have that screw in there, it comes with that. It just barely has to come out of that bump. It's not like the 1872 where it has to swing out and then back. It just has to barely just kind of come out of that bump. And you can eject cartridges. This has the four hammer clicks because it is a Uberti made uh, old model. And they are still making those without their uh, hammer safety. Love that sound. And that is the Uberti Single Action Army. So we've got both back together for a minute. We'll talk about both of them together. So as I was saying earlier, um, they reached 16,000 of these in 1874, the end of 1874, and uh, 12,500 of those were in in service. So they were busy when this first came out. They were really busy trying to fill their military contract, and it took some time before you could go into 
uh, a store and, and purchase one of these as a civilian. So these, you know, the, the uh, other makers of revolvers and the Colt open top would have been sitting in the case as an option for you to purchase if you were looking to purchase, you know, a revolver before these began to, you know, really uh, flood the civilian market. Many firearm uh, industry historians believe that Colt released this pistol just to fool their competition, right? Because if you're looking at the 1860 percussion revolver, if you're looking at the, the conversions, and you have this there on the table, they look very similar, almost exactly the same. It's not, you know, it doesn't separate itself very well. So there wasn't a whole lot of hoorah, really, about it. This, however, the 1873 was a game changer. So, you know, people speculate that they kind of held this in reserve, you know, released that, made a few thousand of them to hit the market, and then they held this in reserve, and then it was like, pow. This was a game changer. And at the time when the uh, U.S. Army was purchasing both the, the Schofield and the, uh, and the Single Action Army from Colt, they were trying to make their mind up of which one they wanted to go with because you know, both had really good features. Both were a forty five caliber. The cartridge is what ended up making this the the firearm that the army went with because this this could fire both the forty five Schofield and the forty five Colt. Whereas the Schofield could only fire the Schofield. It was a shorter round. It was a uh, by today's standards, I guess you could call it a 45 special, and this being the 45 magnum. Two really neat revolvers. I hope y'all don't mind if I go into a little bit of kind of how these uh, revolvers were typically carried. I've got a California Slim Jim or Slim Jim holster right here, and I have a Mexican Loop or a Cheyenne Mexican Loop holster right here. Early on, the Slim Jim holster was was very popular for the cap and ball conversions and the open top style revolvers. It gets its name from being very slim. It has a fixed belt loop which became more difficult to slide over the cartridge belts. There's no restraining mechanism. It's just held in by friction. And this is the Mexican loop, which became more popular about the time of the single actions. It's a loop holster, so it's one piece of leather that loops over and locks into itself. And this allows it to fit a wide variety of belts and cartridge belts, so it can slide over the cartridge loops. This bump right here makes it a Cheyenne Mexican loop holster. The bump kind of locks it in between the loops, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to slide out. Really got to pull on it. You can imagine how aggravating it would be to go to draw your pistol and the holster comes with it. 
especially if your life depended on it. Got to clear that holster. So these are a couple of ways that they were, were carried. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll keep doing reviews.